Welcome to another Abrare Twitch streaming session. Just uh, gonna session. quickly just uh, gonna Get chat quickly. up on the screen and mute myself so I don't have to hear it. All right. Oh, the bit rate is gonna be absolutely destroyed by this. Let me pause that. Okay, that's better. All right. So, um, <clears throat> first of all, welcome. Yeah, the the bit rate. Anytime we're streaming, but well, first of all, welcome Carson. Um, secondly, yeah, anytime we're streaming the the tweet card itself, it's gonna look god awful. Um, so I guess we'll start before I um, before I get into the code. I'll start by saying a little bit about my development environment. So this is my pocket chip um, portable computer basically oh true true okay so I can go to full screen for it but yeah this is my pocket chip it's a little uh, portable computer basically and uh, this thing oh you know what I should probably tweet uh, should probably really quickly just tweet that I'm, I'm live live on twitch.tv slash a brer tweet Boom. Okay, I've done my due diligence. Yeah, so uh, this thing, uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know if I need to turn it on, but basically, like, it's got a little keyboard. Um, I'm touch typing on it. You know, it's got a D-pad. It's got uh, number keys up here, a bunch of modifiers and stuff. Yeah, you didn't know how to say Abrer? <laughs> now I should do, um, I should just ask people how they pronounce it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I like to, um, this is what I make my tweet carts on because, you know, the tweet carts are small. There's, there's not a lot of complex code. You can pretty much see everything on the screen at once. Um, so it's just nice to play it on a comfortable environment. Um, also, hello to anybody watching this in the future on YouTube or whatever. Ah, bear. No, there's another R there, dude. You, you can never miss the second R. Well, actually, it's the first R. It's not a silent R. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's uh, let's get started. So this uh, this is the code. I'm gonna start out because this is a tweet cart. Basically, we're starting out with um, everything like really compressed. So you can see that up here, it's like you know multiple places where um, there could be a new line, but there isn't. So I'm gonna start out for the sake of clarity by putting all these new lines in which will make this have too many characters to be a tweet cart. However, it will make it a lot easier to talk about what's happening. So that's step one. Um, and of course, this is a piece that's on FX hash right now, and the source code is there. You can also find the source code on my Twitter. Um, and there is, in the FX hash description, there's also a um, a link to the educational version of Pico 8, um, which I guess I will include in the YouTube description. I'll include all these links in the YouTube description, but um, you can actually go to the editor yourself and view the uh, the code live in the editor. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's get started. So, to, so the whole point behind this piece um, is that it is a generator. So when it starts out, you get this. Um, you get this nice unique pattern uh, that is purely made by drawing lines of different colors and cycling the colors um, and every time you left click on the screen um, you get a new pattern basically and this this is a linear sequence of seeds um, which I mean I'll get into this later but right here I'm literally adding one to the seed um, and this is a linear sequence of seeds basically um, so what that means is that every unique starting seed has its own unique linear sequence of patterns that it's going to go through every time you left click. And if you start at the same starting seed every time, you're going to get the same sequence every time, um, which I can show by actually going right here and just doing, you know, s equals one. So now we start with this nice little pattern, then we get this pattern, then we get this pattern, then we get this pattern. Now if I reset the Pico 8, you can see that we're getting exactly the same pattern, the same sequence of patterns. Um, so that's basically how the seed is defining things. 
Um, so that's why you know I'm calling this a generator generator essentially. Um, and then the other feature here is for the controls is that when you right click, uh oh, hopefully it doesn't crash. Um, when you right click, um, it it saves a GIF of uh, the last. Well, it's on on the web viewer. It's the last 16 seconds, but uh, I have it set to 120 seconds, which sometimes crashes the Pico 8. <laughs> Thanks, Carson. I'm glad you liked it. Um, all right, so yeah, so let's uh, get into the code a little bit. So there's a lot of code golf that goes into making tweet carts. Um, so some of this stuff that you're going to see in here is just purely for code golf reasons. So one of these code golf things, which I actually do all the time anyway, just because I prefer it, um, is uh, I'm setting the rand function, which is what generates a random number from 0 to 1 um, or 0 to whatever number you give it. Um, I'm setting that to just be stored in the variable r so that you can just call r and it saves characters. Likewise, srand is the function that's used to seed the pseudorandom number generator. Um, so for context, if I were to do, say, um, let's see. Oh, hey, welcome to the chat. Sableref is here, that's cool. Um, so yeah, if I do, um, so question mark here, this is just print. And if I do print, ran, oh, let's clear the screen. If I do um, print rand, I get a random number, right? So if I do srand and I set the seed to be one, and then I call rand a couple times, I get these three random numbers. But now if I do srand again and I call rand, oh no, I screwed it up. And if I call rand again, then we get the same sequence of numbers. So you can see here it's like 0 0.08, um, 0 0.98, 0 0.59. So this is the principle behind setting, yo, Chippy's here, the, the gang's all here. Um, so this is, uh, this is the principle behind setting the random seed, essentially. Um, when you set the random seed, then when you call for a random number, you're going to get the exact same sequence of random numbers every time. So it's, uh, it's random, but non-random. You know, the randomness is subjective. It's basically like if you know what's going to happen, it's not random, and if you do not know what's going to happen, then it is random. Um, so here I'm, I'm going to be using this function multiple times, so to save space, I'm just assigning it to the variable p. Um, this is a call to the palette function, that's what gives us this nice um, rainbow pattern, basically. Um, so this is just a rainbow gradient, um, initially based on a gradient that uh, Guandanarian came up with for the Pico 8. Um, and I just have adapted it um, because I really liked it. I thought it was really great. CLS, this is clearing the screen. Um, so this is so that when you launch it, you don't actually get a bunch of um, random stuff um, filling the screen. It's, it just clears the screen um, before it draws anything. Now here, this is the core. This is one of the core um, components. Nice. This is one of the core components for um, for this piece, basically. So here I'm calling r minus one, passing in the argument of minus one to the random function causes some sort of overflow or something. Um, Guandanarian is the goat. Um, so yeah, y y this causes some sort of overflow where basically it's calling random, but it's instead of zero to one, it's now giving you um, any possible fixed point number. So the full range of possible fixed point numbers. So here I'm basically just requesting any random possible number and then assigning that to S, which I'm going to refer to as our seed from now on. So that is our seed essentially. Then the next step is to seed the random number generator using our new seed. I'm declaring a few variables here. X and Y are exactly what they sound like. Um, C is our color value. Um, B is a buffer that I'm going to be using to make sure that the input doesn't, um, you know, trigger one million times as soon as you click. Um, there needs to be an input buffer. Poke, this poke statement here, I'm I'm going to... Um, um, Carson asks, is there a reason why you decided to use a raw pal call instead of using the palette maker? Um, so the palette maker has a, a mode where you can... Um, it's a tweet cart that someone made. Um, you know what, let me see this. So I'll just show you. Save... Um, demo.p8 um, load hashtag palette maker okay now we're here in the palette maker um, 
you can see these are all the possible Pico 8 colors here and basically like if you want a palette you can uh, you can make some colors and arrange them how you how you like um, and then you can basically you get this um, string here that you can copy and you know that's your palette you can also click this and you get a much smaller string sometimes smaller string um, that allows you to save characters basically but still functionally it does the same thing it's just pushing this right into the system's memory instead of doing a function call um, and to the answer the question of why I didn't do it um, I just didn't need it um, and I'm unsure if it was really going to save characters anyway because sometimes these uh, emoji characters take up um, they take up too many um, they take up like two characters on Twitter instead of one character but anyway as we'll see um, much of the code that I actually have written here is not what's making the art it's just the control scheme so this poke is a poke to this memory location this is just what enables the mouse functionality in the cart so that's why when you left click you get a new outcome basically um, here we have colon colon underscore colon colon this is the matched pair to this go to statement here that goes to this tag essentially um, there's a couple of reasons there's a couple of really important reasons why we're using a go to here instead of a draw loop or any co any kind of modern sensible um, scheme um, and the reason is one uh, it saves characters it saves like three characters or something and two um, this actually ignores the frame rate and simply fills the graphics buffer as fast as possible and once it's full it draws the graphics buffer with no regard for um, for the, the display buffer essentially. So you get, this is how you get so many of these patterns um, because certain frames are being dropped actually and that's what's allowing um, a lot of these weird emergent behaviors to occur. So to show that I can actually change this by going function underscore draw and then instead of, um, instead of go to here I can just say end and now you can see how like this is functionally like this is useless like it's it's um it's restricting the draw loop calls based on the frame rate which is set to 30 frames per second and so we're seeing how these patterns are being drawn um by essentially using lines um simply random lines in a random color gradient um that progress across the screen with very slight um, changes in their in their position in this grid. Um, I can't even easily click the screen with this. Um, yeah, it is it is cool, but it's not um, it's not producing emergent. Um, well, unless you're extremely patient, it's not producing emergent patterns. It's um, it's just producing interesting patterns. So let's go back now to what we had before with the go to. And you can see, like, basically it's, it's going through the same process, but it's just doing it so fast because there's so little computation involved that it's massively exceeding the frame rate and it's just flooding the screen with these patterns, um, which are all being drawn by very tiny stacked lines. Um, the maximum length for one of these lines is 16 pixels, and that would be if it was perfectly diagonal. But we'll get into that. Um, okay, so this is, the, this is the core of the piece right here. Um, this is the seed looping functionality. Oh, welcome. Hey, Dear Oked. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but welcome to the chat. Um, so yeah, um, this is essentially the core of the piece. Um, to explain this, I'm probably going to have to revisit this after I explain more stuff, but I also want to just show something right now. Um, what's going on here is it's an if statement. So within these parentheses, is the if statement and then if this condition is satisfied and evaluates to true then we call p with an argument of s where if we remember p is what's resetting the random seed and s is our seed value that we got outside of the draw loop when the cart was first run so here we're basically calling a random we're calling random and we're getting a random number between 0 and 1 and if that number exceeds 0.5 then we're going to reseed um, we're going to reseed with the, our original seed. So basically it's like on every 
iteration of the draw loop, there's a random chance of 50% that we're going to reset um, the seed. Then, directly underneath that, we also do the same thing, but with a stricter um, cutoff of greater than 0.9. So there's only a 10% chance. And the reason for this is because um, it just makes the distribution of generative outcomes a lot more complex and interesting compared to if you just have one of these statements. So that's something that I'm still exploring, um, but we'll see. Um, anyway, so I want to show what happens if you comment out these lines. So now I'm not doing any seed resetting at all. So the seed is being set once at the start of the, um, the cart, and then we're doing everything else the same. So we're still running the same graphical process. And you can see if I, if I reset it here, every time I'm resetting it, it looks like I'm not getting a different piece at all. Like these all look functionally identical. Um, they're not. So every one of these outcomes is technically completely unique and, and unique to the seed that was provided. However, to a human being looking at this, they all might as well be identical. This is maximum entropy for this algorithm, essentially. This is the maximum amount of noise. It's, it's completely meaningless to a human being look at, looking at it. All we, all, we, all we do is we have this algorithm running and we trap a certain piece of it by resetting the seed in a random way. Because the seed is being reset randomly, it creates these intricate patterns that are very different um, depending on when the seed trapping is occurring. Um, so that's basically the, that's the, that's the heart behind the entire algorithm. And now we can show the, so that's maximum entropy. We can show the minimum entropy state as well. So here I'm not doing a random call. I'm literally just resetting the seed every loop. And so you're getting, um, you're getting like a similar effect where you're getting these unique patterns. Um, I'm not even sure if this is going to sh show across Twitch very easily, but like, Essentially, there are certain patterns. Oh, this one's very good. This one's a good one. Um, there are certain patterns that like won't appear because they need to build across like three frames, for example, instead of one frame. So by doing it every frame, you're essentially restricting the, the freezing of the seed looping to be um, the maximum frequency that it can kind of occur. Um, but comparatively, if you if you do it in this you know semi-random way, you can get a lot more um, interesting variety in the outputs. So I think something like this pattern, if it's showing up well, um, it's like the pattern that's being generated. Um, it's really like two or three patterns or rule sets for patterns, but they're stacked onto each other. Um, but then the seed loop gets reset, and we start back at the first one. But because the seed loop um, is like when the seed looping occurs is defined by the seed looping itself. So um, that's what creates this, this variety. So then, okay, so now how does the piece actually work? Like how are we actually drawing on the screen? Um, there we go, that's better. Um, how are we actually drawing on the screen? So um, basically every iteration of the loop, we take X and we increase it by a random number from zero to eight. Um, we take y and we increase it by a random number from 0 to 8. Our buffer, we subtract from it. As I said, this is literally just um, a buffer for the input, um, the mouse clicking for the generator. Um, the c, which is our color value, we're going to increase it by a random number from 0 to 0.2. Um, so basically, every time we're, we're changing our xy position, we're also changing our color, but we're never increasing it more than 0.2. And because on the Pico 8, the color is um, integer based, basically this will have, um, this will only be a color when it passes above some integer threshold essentially, um, which, we're, which we're seeing here with this C mod eight um, call. So that's, I'm only interested in the first eight colors, which are black and then these seven colors that are defined up here. Um, yeah, and then X I'm restricting to 136 and Y I'm restricting to 136. So whenever those get higher than 136, they just get dropped back down to zero and the whole process starts again. And 
you might be asking why 136 and not 128, which is the um, actual display size of the Pico 8. And so I will show you why. Um, and the answer is um, right here along this bottom edge and the right edge, you'll notice if the bitrate allows for it, that there are um, some pixels just kind of building up on the edge of the screen. And I just really hate that. And I want the pattern that we're seeing to extend um, across the entire screen with no obvious breaks. And so I, I actually calculate it beyond the edge of the screen. Um, so I just, I, this way you're thinking of the screen more as just a clipping region um, and the actual pattern, this tessellation exceeds that clipping region. Um, okay, and then this is finally where all the drawing occurs. There is only one function here that is drawing anything to the screen at all. I'm calling the line function. We have an x, we have uh, a couple of arguments here. We have x1, y1, x2, y2, and then the color. Um, and basically, we're doing x, um, x1 is just x y1 is just y and then x2 is going to be um, x plus or minus 6 some random value between negative 6 and plus 6 and then it's the same for y and then the color is just whatever the color is um, and that's really it that creates um, that creates all the variety here and that's why sometimes you can see me yeah you as well thanks for thanks for tuning in man have have a great weekend Okay, so that's why you can see some of these patterns. Um, you can sometimes see the lines instead of like, okay, right here, I'm looking at the stream now. It's, you can see that, I think. Car Carson, please <laughs> please answer if you can see this. Um, but there are some, some briefly appearing diagonal lines. Um, those lines are fully emergent, I think. Um, but they could, they like they can't be. Um, in this case, these lines that we see cannot be the lines that we're drawing because the lines that we're drawing are always one solid color. But these lines that we're seeing are are like a gradient of colors. So basically, like, yeah, yeah, the the animation does screw with the bit rate. Um, maybe it's better if I just hold it still here, like this. So here we can see like there's um, there's this overall sort of wavy pattern that's being created by drawing all these lines on the screen. But then there's also this extra pattern that's overlaid on top that has these diagonal lines forming a, a gradient where those are just emerging out of the, out of the pattern. Um, there's nothing that I'm explicitly doing to encode those. Here you can kind of see it's almost easier when it's moving, but you can kind of see um, where the individual lines are being drawn because sometimes you get um, you get a pattern that um, repeats itself every frame or something, and that way um, you do it's the same as setting um, it's the same as resetting the seed every single frame. However, other times you get it where it's multiple patterns in one that are overlaid. So it's it's kind of I don't know. It's interesting. It's something I'm still exploring a lot of. Um, okay, and then we only have two more lines to discuss, really. Um, the next one is if stat 34 uh, equals 1. So that stat 34 is why we did this poke here to the system memory. Now we can use stat 34 to query the bitmap for the mouse. Um, and if it has a value of 1, that means the left mouse button is being clicked. And if it has a value of 2, that means the right mouse button is being clicked. Um, and so I'm also saying if the buffer is greater than zero and the left mouse button is clicked, um, then do this, which is increase the seed by one, clear the screen and reset the buffer to nine. I chose nine instead of 10 just because it's less digits so it saves me space. Um, and then right click, uh, it's the same idea. We're setting the buffer to nine to reset the buffer. And then I'm sending a, an, a command to the Pico 8 that causes it to record a GIF so all said this is the whole tweet cart um, it's just drawing lines um, different colored lines um, and using um, seed looping to get these crazy emergent patterns and most of the code here is um, simply exists just for the sake of 
um, like we're having mouse controls and recording the uh, recording the GIFs. Um, so now I'm just going to turn it back into full tweak cart by eliminating any of the unnecessary white space like so and now we can go down here and we see that we're at 277 characters which leaves us three characters to spare so technically if I wanted to have even more um, seeds in the linear generator I could do this um, so now that's exactly 280 characters and now we're getting um, we're getting these patterns exactly how we like them yeah, and, uh, the, and then just for the people who showed up late, I'll just say, how do I make these things? I actually developed them all on my pocket chip. Um, this is a portable, you know, little Linux computer that runs the Pico 8. Um, it's got a really nice clicky keyboard. The keys are incredibly satisfying to type on. Um, and yeah, this it's just the best way to make tweet carts because, uh, like, why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, so... Um, it's 125. I guess we got five more minutes and then I'm gonna go eat a late lunch. Um, any questions before I head out? Because uh, this has been really fun. I'm, I'm really glad you guys showed up. And uh, by the way, this is um, this piece is on FX hash. Um, it's currently minted, but um, it's only of, it's going to be available for people to mint on June 1st, but it's only available to the people that are in my tweet cart token club. Um, that's uh, like a yearly subscription thing that I have. Um, next year, I'm going to expand it to 24 members. Um, but yeah, if you want to collect one of these pieces, you're going to have to wait until June. Um, and then you're going to have to try to get it from somebody in the tweet cart token club. Um, I am going to make more in the Emergence series because I, I have only done circles and lines um, so far. So um, there is one really, I guess I'll show one, um, one fun thing before we go. Um, here's a really fun, here is a really fun um, thing that my friend Robert actually showed me. Oh, great question, Sable Raff, thank you. Um, so what, check this out. Not neat. Some of these are not going to be that good, but like, there's something here. So this is kind of sneak preview of what the next emergence piece is going to be. I'm thinking big circles. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, the FX hash features. Um, good news. I I predicted this question, so I already had the uh, already had the code ready. Um, so here the difference is basically um, stat six basically calls, um, it calls, um, it speaks to the JavaScript emulator that's running the Pico 8 and it says, did you get past any string arguments? And if so, what are they? Um, and it stores them, you know, it's, that's what stat six returns and then that's stored here in W. Um, then basically all I'm doing is um, doing some math to convert um, any string into a unique string or into a unique number. And then basically like I say, um, that's the seed basically. Um, and then there's this code here is just so that it will work even um, not on FX hash. Like if I'm debugging, I still want it to work locally. Um, so basically I just say like, if there is no, um, if there is no string, get it, just behave normal, you know? So basically, that's how um, that's how it works, and that's and then you still need the FX hash snippet in your um, in your JavaScript, which is running the Pico8 emulator, um, and you just need to make sure that whatever the hash is from FX hash, that you pass that um, that you pass that in um, properly, and then yeah, um, Carson uh, Carson Compton, who's in the chat, he's he's the one with the mod sword next to his name, um, he's Okay, I'm assuming that's the link to the video that he made. Um, we came up with this a long time ago. Um, I think uh, I think Anthony was the first person to to figure out how to get stat working. But at some point, we figured out how to get features working as well, if you like that on your Pico 8 stuff, um, like the FX hash features. Um, basically, you just have to... You just have to pass everything in as a string, and then you have to have complicated code that you've written inside your um, 
Pico 8 cart to actually dissect the string that you're passing in. You know, think of it as like a CSV or something that you parse it and then you get the features. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, I, I would recommend checking out Carson's video um, and the link is in the chat. Um, yeah. Any last questions before we head out? Uh, the, you know, the weird thing about Twitch is I, ha I can ask that and then I have to wait like, um, then I have to wait like 10 seconds to see if people respond. Thanks, I'll add it to the next creative code news. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm also going to upload this VOD to YouTube, so I will tweet out the YouTube link later. And that will include any links to, you know, code or whatever that I've discussed throughout the stream. All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for turning out. Um, this was a blast and, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to try to do more of these. Um, if you are interested in what I'm up to and you want to know what's going on in my life, uh, check out abrare.xyz. Um, I will always have my most, uh, up-to-date issue of my newsletter there, which I just mint on Taya. Um, so it's verified, you know, my identity, my links, whatever. And, uh, and I will include, you know, uh, if I do videos like these and upload them or whatever, you know, they'll be sure to be discussed in the newsletter. So if, if you follow that newsletter, uh, you won't miss anything, but it's not a real newsletter. It does not get emailed out. So it's a, it's a web three thing. So just welcome to web three, I guess. Um, all right. Thanks everybody. And, uh, I'll catch you next time.